Where you at? Where's you at, bro? This is McConan, nigga. So, Migos were obviously the big lights of this like new scene. Uh, most recently, this guy McConan, or I Love McConan, has uh, kind of come up. Uh, he wrote this song, uh, Going Up to the Club on a Tuesday, that uh, Drake heard and remixed as just Tuesday. Now he's a huge new weird thing in Atlanta. Sometime you win, sometime you lose. So, this kind of new generation has sprung up in Atlanta, and it's still trap music, sort of in spirit and sound, but it's uh, kind of a little less dark and a lot more um, kind of colorful and even psychedelic. Uh, there's a lot of new drugs, too. Got your girl in the cut of sheet shoes, a club going up. I like it like those 1980s shows where they're like out there rocking out and like fans are screaming and it's misty and shit and it's like, yeah, they don't even say shit. They're just like, just, and everybody says, ah, oh, fuck. Like Guns N' Roses and shit. Yeah, just, just, yeah, real rock and roll shit. Just, I feel like that's missing. Fuck going on up here? Just, what's up, Playing fucking games. Ooh. Where's you at, bro? This is McConan, nigga. <laughs> oh, right. Everybody's creative over here, so that's why I like to come over here and, and just get creative with these kids. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey man, hold up. Who is that? Hey, come my hoes at? Hey, go get my hoes out of the car. Tell them hoes. <laughs> We all basically mix and master our own shit. We got all goddamn yeah. edit a video. But see, back in the day, it was like you was a talent, and the label would be able to take your talent and form it into saying, OK, this is what we could do. These are the markets. This is we can get you here. Get you working with these producers, these people. Motherfucker get out here, do all that shit on their own now. That's like, well, you, you are the label. The internet has eliminated all of that shit. The internet means you can be anywhere the fuck you want to be, bro, yeah. and goddamn the music gonna come out, period. You're not from Atlanta, bro. You're not from Seattle. You're from the internet, bro. Nobody was fucking with us. Nobody wanted to fuck with our music. We came out here and started dropping all that shit. Yeah. But like one thing that's helping me to weave through is having relationships and being able to take advantage of these relationships, going to see these people when you know they're around and shit. All right, we got this bit. McConan's internet-based fame, as well as his name, all came from a blog he started in 2008 while he was living under house arrest. Why were you under house arrest? Some shit happened. I paid a friend died and all that. Like, you know, like, I don't know. I just I don't like talking about it anymore because it's like I talked about it so much. What happened was McConan was in a car with his friend on their way back from partying when his friend started playing with a gun. McConan tried to take it away from him, but the gun accidentally went off and his friend was killed. You know, it's just, I just feel like the only thing I could say about everything is just, um, it's just to keep guns away from you. You know what I'm saying? Like, those shits are dangerous as fuck, and a gun dropping could easily just go off and kill an innocent person. And I've been around those situations, and I've seen it happen countless times. Everybody feels like uh, they got to prove so much, but it's like, dog, no, you don't. I don't need your love haunting me. I have enough fucking demons. Second stop? Yeah. So this is Sunny Digital. This is nice. He owns the whole complex, actually. <laughs> and this is where we made hey, I don't sell Molly no more. That pole? Yeah. This is stripper pole. Oh, yeah. I never really cared about doing drugs or selling drugs or whatever, but out here it's the demand for it and everybody wants to trap. Party packs, that's what the fuck I was into. You ever had Molly before? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, we was on it for like a week at my house. We probably been here with like 10 different bitches just going, just having like a good ass time this motherfucker though. How did you guys hook up originally? I met him at Metro House. Metro had like called a super, like super legion meeting of all the producers, right? <laughs> no, I swear, and all the producers started showing up. It was like him, TM88, Southside. <laughs> And then we was just going hard that one day. It was good. I got to get that work in with a lot of people fast. You know what I'm saying? It was like everybody was just passing McConan around. Like, bro, look, we got this new shit. Boom. Everybody it was just like a hot potato type of thing. Like, boom, take yeah. that, take that. You know what I'm saying? Do you worry that it's going to, like, temper off at some point? The game is fucked up, if you ask me. I don't know how I'm here now in front of this camera. <laughs> shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it was like, you asked him two years ago? Hell no. That's trash. That is trash. Who, um, all trying to get some shrooms? Be it the shrooms or his own inborn weirdness, or both, most likely, McConan's music is pretty fucking tripped out in the context of hip hop. The producer he's working with has already made inroads between the trap scene and mainstream electronic dance music, but this is well past that. I'm not even sure it belongs to a proper genre. It's home recording style blog songs and is just barely on key singing over 16 RPM R&B synth pop. He's almost like the R. Stevie Moore of hip hop. This is where trap music is heading. It's one seriously weird mutation. Come on, bitch. You finna take one of them shrooms? Me too. Open your goddamn mind. <laughs> I'm fucked up. Let me be the first to admit. Ain't nobody else took them. Woo! Shrooms came late in my life. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't even, you know, the people I know, they don't, they think that shit is you know, voodoo or some shit. You know, they're like, hell no. <laughs> I need a goddamn bed with a booth. You know what I'm saying? Just lay down and record some shit. <laughs> <laughs> this a fake cast vibe in here, by the way. <laughs> fake ass candles and shit. Uh, uh, two heads on a cigarette, two heads on a cigarette, uh, uh. I see you walking down the bus line lately. I'm trying to find a way to make you my lady. I'm all caught up trying to build for us. I'll take your heart if you give it to us. The things you want, I will always do. I just want to be with you. Two heads on a cigarello. Two heads on a cigarello. Uh, uh. Two heads on a cigarello. Just like we planned it. I'm glad I don't have to drive, though. <laughs> Do you know Terrence McKenna, the writer? It's about like mushrooms. He thinks we evolved to be people because like when we were like weird ape things, we ate a bunch of mushrooms and it expanded the language centers in our brain. Yeah, I, that's pretty believable. Yeah. The whole mushroom thing is very believable, I mean. Definitely makes music a lot better. Yeah, and, and visuals. You know what I'm saying? It just makes, shit is crazy. It just fucking evolves you and then you're just like, you can just keep unfolding and unfolding and understanding. And it's really like the whole thing about the mushroom is that you really can't explain it to somebody. It's yeah. like they have to take it themselves and then the evolving will happen inside of them and the understanding. It's, I feel like we should have more moon technology or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I think shit is like flying up from the ocean to the sky every, you know what I'm saying, night and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's so unknown. It's right there, but it's like so far, and we don't really know shit about it, and we're so caught up in like all this shit, and it's like how the fuck can certain humans like build cars and iPhones and all this other shit? It's just when you start 
thinking it's like it starts making you think like almost anything is possible. Yeah.